This episode is brought to you by Shopify. Whether you're selling a little or a lot, Shopify helps you do your thing, however you cha-ching. From the launch your online shop stage, all the way to the we just hit a million orders stage. No matter what stage you're in, Shopify's there to help you grow. Sign up for a $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash special offer, all lowercase. That's shopify.com slash special offer. Your brain needs support. And new Ollie Brainy Chews are a delightful way to take care of your cognitive health. Made with scientifically backed ingredients like Thai ginger, L-theanine, and caffeine. Brainy Chews support healthy brain function and help you find your focus. Stay chill or get energized. Be kind to your mind and get these nootropic chews at ollie.com. That's O-L-L-Y dot com. These statements have not been evaluated by the Food and Drug Administration. This product is not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease. Are we going to do a, should we do our intro stuff now? Uh, I mean, I think we can just dive in. I mean, you can do a little bit of an intro, but literally just be like, hey, this is different than a normal episode, and we're just going to dive right into this topic, or whatever. <laughs> this is different from our normal episode, because we have producer Matt, finally, who can talk about books with us. Matt, this is actually your intervention. Oh, no! <laughs> <laughs> this is a lot sooner than other podcasters have realized. <laughs> but today it's just family. Look at us. Yeah, this is the this is the family episode. This is yeah. This is like Sunday dinner. Yes, that's exactly what this is. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the Sunday dinner YA OK episode. I love that. I like that. I think it's good. Yeah. Uh, Okay, do we need more of an intro than that? or should No, we just I think get that's perfect. It? Let's just dive into it. What's the topic? Yeah. Okay, today I we're going to talk think... about what books we think would be really great TV shows or movies. Or movies. And I mean, I'm going to just throw this out immediately. Um, there's some books by Eric J. Brown that I know would be great. Yeah, I was literally going to say, uh, listen, yes. <laughs> we'll, we won't mention it on here, but uh, for sure, both of the books I've read from Eric J. Brown, I thought, how are these not already movies or TV shows? Absolutely. I think um, All That's Left of the World would be a great movie. And then Lose You to Find Me, TV show. Like so, I actually do want Lose You to Find Me to be like a TV show. I always pictured it kind of like Skins, where it's a new cast every single year, kind of thing. Ooh, I think that would, be cool. would it take place in the same spot though, and like have just yeah? New so it would always take through? place. Yeah, it would always take place in the um, Sunset Estates. So it would just be new kids getting a job there every yeah. year. So and almost then, like, there would be maybe one or two. Almost like um, how they took Love Simon. <laughs> And then did Love, Victor, which was like not based on anything in particular. Just like, hey, here's more students at that school a couple of years later or whatever. I like that. I yeah. love that idea, especially because that, that is a job great. that has so much turnover every single year. Yeah. Like, what would be your casting choices? I would always. So that's the other thing. I would always want it to be new actors because okay. I feel like that happened with Skins. I mean, you had like Nicholas Holt. Mm -hmm. uh dev patel was on there i think yeah the one girl that played uh nicholas holt's sister who went on to do a bunch oh. of other things in horror movies kyla i don't know That's yeah i know you're talking about um but i think that is kind of cool because like you can just have these kids who are i mean nicholas holt was like the biggest actor at the time uh, in the show at the mm -hmm. time he was the only one who had been doing movies but everybody else was pretty much new actors and it was just them trying to figure it out like as they're acting. I think that would be fun. Just have kind of no names and then just let that launch their careers. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I love that. My books could launch careers. Yeah. Including your I own. Love that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Fingers crossed for that one one day. <laughs> no, I'm gonna since I don't think we're gonna do a traditional what are we reading this episode. Um, mm -hmm. I do want to talk about the book that I'm reading because as it. I'm reading it, I'm like, my God, I want this to be a TV show. Yeah. Um, Daniel Page had a book called Dorothy Must Die. Have either of you oh, read okay. or heard of it? No. I've heard of it. I haven't read it. Is okay, it like so, Wizard of Oz? Yeah. So Dorothy? the concept okay. is this girl from Kansas gets pulled up by a tornado and dropped into Oz. But Oz is terrible. 
And all the munchkins are like, ever since Dorothy came back, it's been hellacious. And she Whoa. gets recruited by the other witches to basically, she has to take the, the Tin Man's heart back, remove the Scarecrow's brain, make the lion cowardly again, and then kill Dorothy to restore Oz back to its normal world. And I'm like, I, oh my God, I'm like 150 pages into it. I'm like, I love this so much. And it's like the things that happen are so horrific that I'm like, I want, I want this show. Like the scarecrow has been like using his brain to do experiments on animals. So like now he's added human ears to crows to spy on anyone they think might be trying to overthrow Dorothy or like any winged monkeys that wouldn't bow down to Dorothy. He surgically removed their wings and just made them normal Ew. monkeys. Like it's really fucked up and crazy. I love it. I know that they were originally supposed to make that a TV show, I think on the CW. And I guess it just went into like, um, like a nowhere development land hell and never came out. Cause I was like, I am all on board for wanting to visually watch this. It's fantastic. So that's great. What an insane concept, right? <laughs> I always like spinoffs like that, like kind of where that you take the idea and just kind of twist it a little mm -hmm. bit. Well, I mean, that's kind of Love like, it. you know, the very first episode of the podcast was the my fair Brady episode, which was kind of mm -hmm. doing its own unique twist on my fair lady, which again, Another one I would love to watch a, a TV show or movie based off of. Uh, oh, I guess yes. we should take anybody who's already been on the show off the table so that we don't offend <laughs> anyone by not naming their stuff. <laughs> well, if my fair Brady was, it would have to be a musical as well. Like yeah. with the oh, yeah. Songs. Oh, hell yeah. Speaking of, I started watching Girls 5 ever and it was great. I actually just made a TikTok about have either of you watched it yet i just no. put it on my list because you are no lie the it's fifth so person this funny. month to tell me to watch it it's a tina fey it's comedy so... about a one-hit yeah. wonder girl group that tries to reunite 24 years later <laughs> yeah but i will say I, I'll, I'll bring this back around to books in a way i just made a tiktok about there's one episode where uh one of the main characters dawn who's played by sarah Bareilles, she mm -hmm. and her husband have, like they have this miscommunication and it does the miscommunication trope so well and mm -hmm. that's like my biggest pet peeve in rom-coms because miscommunications it's always when two characters are not talking about the fact that they love each other and that's right. why they break up right and this was something where they are talking to each other and they're communicating they just don't realize they're thinking two separate things and okay. it was done so well that I had to make like a TikTok out of it just to explain it to people. <laughs> it was so good. But the whole show is great. You should watch it. What is it on? Uh, it's on Netflix now. It was on okay. Peacock, which is why I didn't watch it before. <laughs> Sorry, Peacock. Understand. Uh, so. Let's go to a commercial. I think we're sponsored by. Oh, it's Peacock. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. Okay, wait. So I'm reading a book right now. It's called The Wishing Game, I think. Meg Schaefer. Yes, Meg Schaefer. And it sort of gives me the same vibe. Yeah. Um, as like, it's sort of a retelling of a um, Willy Wonka type of thing. Except instead of it being um, Mr. Wonka, it's like this guy, Jack Masterson, he writes this book series, this Clock Island book series. That's like a children's book series. And then he ended up like the series was so successful. He buys a private island and creates like Clock Island and he lives there. That's where he like continues to write his books. And these kids who like loved the story so much find ways to like run away and get onto the island. And um, so then he does this, this competition for his very last installment of the Clock Island books. And he has five of the kids who had run to the island when they were children. Now they're all adults. He has them come and compete and do all of these different games to see who's going to win the manuscript for the very last book. And then they can do whatever they want with it. And it's so good. And I feel like that would be a great movie because it would give it would give similar vibes vibes as Willy Wonka because you're in this like island where everything is like very like storybook vibes but real and you're also like grounded in real life and and in knowing that like this is all so crazy and like so out of this world and 
he's sort of magical and like sweet and warm and kind. And yeah, it's just so good. And I feel like that would be a perfect, perfect movie. And there's like a little bit of romance. I couldn't put it down this morning because the romance was getting to me. I was like, <laughs> I just want them to kiss. I just want them to kiss. <laughs> um, side note, because you've been mentioning them as your uh, what you've been reading for the last couple episodes. Um, my girlfriend is now reading the uh, the oh. that fantasy smut that you've been reading. <laughs> Court of Thorns and Roses. Yeah. And every once in a while, I'll just get three or four pictures of pages with like mm -hmm. a hot pepper emoji. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like it is it is some that is some spicy <laughs> romance. They're not I'm fucking like, around. No, they quite literally are fucking around, honestly. No, they, yeah. <laughs> In <Facts>. detail. <laughs> I, haven't, I haven't read the last book because the the one that I was reading took me so long to get through, like the second to last one, because it was a lot of like war talk. And I was like, I can't, I'm just so, so I want to take a break from it. And in the last one, I know there's some scene that's like, put your hands on the headboard vibe. That's something that one of the characters says to another. Exactly. Eric, Ooh. if, if I could share a video of exactly you just like flicking your eyebrows up and down like that, <laughs> that was so funny. Yeah. And so it's, it's something. It's really something. The girlies are horny for fairies now. Are you 500 years old and a fairy? The girls want you. Nice. Okay, good to know. I'll so, try to own that more. Yeah. <laughs> I'll that try to that own is that on more. my list to read because I've been yeah. trying to read. Um, I've been struggling with trying to find something to read because I would like to write a YA fantasy. I have this idea in my head and mm -hmm. i don't read a lot of ya fantasy and so i started like i was like oh i know that's not ya correct yeah like, definitely not um <laughs> but i i looked up her other book there's like a crescent city series i think that one is yeah. ya and there's another book the priory of the orange tree that i think is also ya but that one i looked up the my library had the prequel which you can read out of order you know it, it's not a big issue so i like started reading it and it's well written but it's the kind of fantasy that i don't like reading it's the reason that i don't read fantasy a lot where it's like basically pages upon pages upon pages of backstory and just like explaining like families and royal bloodlines yeah. and all of these stories and everything yeah. and it's like that's when i get very much I just don't want to read it. But I think I, I, I think that there's a lot of books that are like that, where yeah. the, that's just what the fantasy is. It's just you have to have all of that in there. Yeah, it's and so I much world building. Like Fourth Wing is, is that like the same that. thing with that no, specific one? Court, Court of Thorns and Roses, I think the world building where it got annoying was in that second to last one where I was like, okay, like I got it. We're going to war. Like, and there's all yeah. these different parts of the this fantasy world that are involved in like all of their kingdoms and whatever. Like that's its own thing. And like fine. But it just got to be too much. Like that book in particular, the world building building was too much. The other ones are better paced, in my opinion. Fourth Wing had a similar thing where the world building, after a while, I was like, oh my God, can we just get to the story? Because I can't. I can't. Um, and I felt that way a little bit, even watching Game of Thrones. I felt like the world yeah. building was so much that I was like, Oh, I feel like I've you actually given me so much information that I no longer know what's going on. I so, yeah. um tied to Game of Thrones, I could not read the Game of Thrones books until yeah. I watched the show. Because I Same. could not I process actually, that there were so many characters' names that were just a couple letters off from each other and I couldn't mm -hmm. like my brain couldn't do it, but then when I had like character faces to apply to the names, mm -hmm. it made it an easier reading experience. But even then, like Finally, I was able to get through the first book, and now I've been struggling to get through the second book. Like, it's like every yeah. time I fantasy is not my everyone assumes I am like a big fantasy guy because I'm a dork, but that has just never <laughs> been my like go to reading book. Uh, and now I'm learning it's mostly memoirs, memoirs and <laughs> YA. Those are like my my go to. If you give me a book of like a musician talking about their career for 300 pages, I'll tear it up sure. in a day. But you give me yeah. a fantasy novel that's not Harry Potter and I just can't do it. So Ugh, I can't do a memoir. What memoir do you think should be made into a, a movie or a TV show? 
Um, okay, well, now I'm on the spot, but uh, <laughs> Elvira's I was literally going to say cr yours cruelly f uh, from Cassandra Peterson is a pretty I mean, that's wild. Her because, life is fascinating well, because you don't even get to her being Elvira until 200 pages into the book. And that does her life before she's Elvira yeah. is fucking fascinating. Really? Elvira is the, the most boring part of her life. It is amazing. But she was like a Vegas showgirl that like was also like a well-known groupie in the music industry. And like she wow. just details like all the musicians that she like, I don't think she really slept with a ton of them, but definitely like got backstage and made out with a lot of very famous celebrities. Cause she was like, she says something in the book where she's like, as much as I used my body to get to places, I was still very much a prude. So she would, like, she would be like super flirty and get backstage at like all these shows. And then like, as soon as the guy would like touch her boob, she'd be like, I'm not that kind of girl. Sorry. And would then like I, leave. Uh, I love that. <laughs> like, Honestly, period. I think that's so funny. That was when she was like 19. Yeah, she so. was like 19. She had just like turned of age. Um, but yeah, and her goal was like to become a Vegas showgirl. And so she got that at like 18. She's like, well, now what? Yeah. Wow. <laughs> and it was Elvis who told her that she's worth so much more. Yeah. She wow. had like a bunch of random nights with Elvis. Um, she tells a story about how Tom Jones made her head to go to surgery after she had sex with him. Holy shit. <laughs> oh, my God. Poor girl. Yeah. Highly recommend that book. I don't that would be a wild, wild wow. TV series or movie. Um, oh, well, Eric, since you threw that out there, though, who would you cast as a young uh, Elvira? I don't know. I'm like trying to think of redheads. <laughs> like, I mean, hair can be dyed, so like, yeah, I know, but true. I feel like I feel like because Elvira wears a wig, you have to have somebody who like kind of looks a little bit like Cassandra Peterson outside of the Elvira personality. I mean, it could, I guess it could be literally anybody. I would actually, I would want it to be like a scream queen because in my head, I, was I, 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 I don't know why my brain is going to Sydney Sweeney, but my brain I, is going to Sydney Sweeney. <laughs> is it because of the boobs, Matt? I think it's because of the boobs and because she's been doing a lot of horror lately. So it feels yeah. like it would make sense for this to be the time. Yeah. I think I, that's, that was my first thought too. But, <laughs> you know, it yeah. seems like it seemed too, too easy, you know? Well, look, it is the most defining thing, thing about her character. So yeah. like, <laughs> I hate to be like that, but for real, that, that yeah. was a big appeal of Elvira hitting the scene in the eighties. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to throw another one out here. I'm trying my best to stick with uh, YA books. Um, so, Homeboy over here loves the Haunted Mansion. It's it's easily uh, I know the, you do. It's easily the best Disney ride, and they have not gotten a Disney. They have not gotten a movie about that ride correct yet. Mm. That is my favorite ride as well. Yes. <laughs> well, yeah. then Eric, let me tell you about Claudia Gray's book, The Haunted Mansion: Storm and Shade, which is everything you want a Haunted Mansion movie to be. Um, and it's about a girl who moves to a new town and she doesn't move into the Haunted Mansion. I think that's like the key part. The Haunted Mansion okay. just happens to be on the same street as hers. OK. Um, and no one goes near it. No one notices it. But it's like she is very much a like Winona Ryder in Beetlejuice type character mm. where she's like fascinated by this place. And she goes there with her camera to take photos of like this decrepit building and discovers that there's ghosts there. But unbeknownst to her, another classmate has already discovered the Haunted Mansion and comes from a broken home and is trying to harness all of the evil in the mansion to destroy the town. And, oh, and her as the new girl has to, like, befriend and work with the nice ghosts in the mansion to combat the evil ghosts inside the mansion. And I'm like, this... The, this woman wrote this book like three years ago, and it was a perfect blueprint for what a Haunted Mansion movie should be. And then they mm -hmm. made whatever the newest Haunted Mansion movie was instead, which was fine. It was better than the Eddie Murphy movie. Yeah, I liked it. I liked it. It was just long. It was very. That's yeah. the thing. Give me a nice 90 minute Haunted Mansion oh, movie. I don't yeah. need two and a half really hours. Long. <laughs> oh, it was like two and a half hours. Yeah. yeah. It's, that's why I put it off for so long. It was a, it was at least two hours and 15 minutes minimum. It, if it not just longer. feels like. Like they could have just told the story yeah. quicker than that. It was not necessary. I didn't read like I'm looking at the cover for this haunted mansion um, for Storm and Shade, and it's like 
actually Disney branded, which is well, interesting. So this is how I read the book was when I go to San Diego Comic Con every year, I bring books, yeah. I bring books to read. Yeah. And I just I could not adjust to the time difference mm. last year. So I was waking up at like four in the morning and just sitting there reading for like three and a half hours waiting oh for everyone God. else in the hotel room to wake up. So I ended mm -hmm. up reading all of the books that I had brought for the trip before my flight home. And the only <laughs> booth in all of Comic-Con that was selling books was the Disney booth. Oh. And I saw that and I was like, fine, I'm going to buy this. And I read that on the entire flight home from California and was like, this is incredible. And then friend of you and I, Ashley Robinson, like a week later, was on her podcast and they were talking about the Haunted Mansion and on their podcast, they do a segment called Recommended Reading. And she was like, everyone should read Storm and Shade by Claudia Gray. Wow. Now, I want to read it. Yeah, yeah you I should. Read this I... for my Halloween read. Yeah. yeah, it's a fun one. Also, announcement. Um, a Court of Thorns and Roses is technically young adult. I think it technically counts. Yeah, you can get as spicy and saucy as you want as long as I don't think it describes penetration, right? Is that like, yeah, like what is the how how are people classifying young adults? Because if that's young adult, I think I, mean, it's I guess the it's, age of the characters, right? That's like the main No, because I, I actually just pitched a book to my uh agent, which I can tell you about after we're done recording, because I'm not even sure if I'm gonna write it or not, but it is about 16 year olds and he came back and was like, I think this is adult and I think you have wow. to make it adult because I don't think YA is going to let you get away with it. And it was not about sex either. Oh. Like there's wow. like some of the beginning, but it was, I, I don't know anymore. I mean, maybe <laughs> I, as, as the uh, co-host of this YA podcast, do I even know? Can I ask a question though? Do you think that with all of the fuckery that's happening in the general world of people in libraries right now from a political stance that uh, unfortunately now maybe the, what used to be a bit of the wild West of what constitutes a YA book or a non YA book has kind of mm -hmm. gotten scrutinized a little bit more. Yeah. And I think because I think I've, I feel like I've said this before. If, if I haven't said it here, I've said it in like events in the past, but like with, libraries especially school libraries they have such a limited budget yeah. that if they even think that a parent could potentially say oh this isn't appropriate for my kid i want you to remove it they won't even buy the books anymore yeah mm. and before they were like pretty much buying anything that they enjoyed and they were like okay this is why i'm gonna buy it because i think that these kids are gonna really connect with it and like, now they, they would can. buy retellings yeah. and um fantasy and stuff like that but now because any parent can be like, oh, this is inappropriate. It should be removed from libraries and no children should read it. There's a lot of librarians who just self-censor and they're like, no, we're not going to basically it, just reading the back of the book. They might be like, all right, well, this has some kind of religious stuff in it. So we're mm. not going to carry this at all because yeah. some parent might get pissed. That's so, very okay. annoying. Maybe that's it. Hey, it's Kaylee Cuoco for Priceline. Ready to go to your happy place for a happy price? Well, why didn't you say so? Just download the Priceline app right now and save up to 60% on hotels. So whether it's Cousin Kevin's Kazoo concert in Kansas City, go Kevin! Or Becky's Bachelorette Bash in Bermuda. You never have to miss a trip ever again. So download the Priceline app today. Your savings are waiting. Go to your happy place for a happy price. Go to your happy price. Priceline. This episode is brought to you by FX's The Veil, starring Elizabeth Moss. FX's The Veil is an international spy thriller that follows two women as they play a deadly game of truth and lies on the road from Istanbul to Paris and London. One woman has a secret, and the other has a mission to reveal it before thousands of lives are lost. FX's The Veil premieres April 30th, only on Hulu. We're making an ad. Napping yeah. ads. I hear that Gary Sinise is free. Oh, okay, great. He hasn't worked since 2020. <laughs> so um, what would be the script that we would have Gary Sinise say for the Napping Through Happy Hour podcast? Listen to this damn show. Damn it. The Napping Through Happy Hour podcast brought to you by Geekscape. Real life, real drama, real time. I'm Gary Sinise. That's the, That's ad. the ad. That's the ad. That's the ad. <laughs> 
Eric, I feel like we've been bouncing a few. Are there any that you've read in your time that you're like, I can't believe that this hasn't at least been optioned as a movie or a TV show at this point? So I will say um, Black Wings Beating by Alex London. I am still shocked it has not. Um, I, I understand probably why it was, probably because it would be expensive. It's a fantasy. It's a YA fantasy. Okay. And... It was one of the ones that I connected with because it was immediately like, oh, okay, this doesn't have like hundreds and hundreds of pages of world building. It just kind of throws you in and it's like, figure mm. it out as we're going along. And it's basically this world where um, everybody is kind of trained to be like, uh, like bird trainers. Like everybody has like birds of prey that they mm. have trained to help them do things. And uh, these twins go, or maybe they're not twins, maybe they're just an older sibling and a younger sibling. But anyway, they go to try and capture this giant bird called the ghost eagle that is supposed to help, like, turn the tide of this war that is coming towards them. Mm -hmm. It's a brother-sister story in the first one, and then the second one is, it's a trilogy. The second one is, like, one of my favorite YA books of all time sure. because it's, like, it's so well done. The it, it like expands the world, and then the third one, the finale, was like really emotional. It like leads up to this big battle, but then the third one ends up being like more cerebral and emotional, and just so fascinating. That's the one that I think should have been made into a TV show by this point, but I think if they're worried about like CGI and it just costing too much, most likely. Yeah. Right. Fair. As I'm scrolling through the list of young adult books like on Goodreads, I'm realizing how many of these books that are that are movies already that I didn't realize were books before. Namely Princess Diaries. Yeah, I didn't yeah. realize that was a book. Ella Enchanted too. That's so Legally crazy. Blonde. Legally Blonde? Um Yeah, Legally Blonde is a YA book. Whoa. From I think and early two thousands. Um, less of a shock, but I guess I just never realized it. Coraline, too. Yeah, I wouldn't classify Coraline as young adult, necessarily. I don't know where... I would probably be middle grade. Yeah, yeah I was going to say, I don't know where his books fall. <laughs> Coraline, according to Goodreads, is young adult. So I don't know if the story is different in the book. I wouldn't be surprised if it was. Not I, that Goodreads, but I don't think, is the authority of yeah, everything. I, but... I guess for me, I just think of Coraline as, even from a page count, level i think it's a pretty tight book <laughs> like, is it? so like, interesting I want to say it's like 200 pages probably at the yeah most. like a, oh wait guys hot take twilight the twilight series absolutely yeah i mean they are they're not well they should be made into a movie they should you know they what should. twilight books sold so well <laughs> and they got no respect after that honestly no one ever <laughs> talks about it incessantly for never. your generation um never ever i mentioned <laughs> I want to talk about this for a quick second. So I did mention Love, uh, Love Simon. I would say mm -hmm. that the book Love Simon, well, the book is called uh, Simon versus the Homo Sapien Agenda. Mm -hmm. um, that and my good friend Eric becoming a YA author, like kind of both drew me into reading a lot more YA. I don't even think you know this, Eric. And this will be the case for the third year in a row now. Um, I was talking about flying to San Diego. My my plain books for the last three uh the last two years have been that's where i read my eric j brown book for that year is while i'm <laughs> flying to california and then usually i get it because i'll start reading it in the airport and then so on and so forth i usually finish it midway through this nine hour flight and then i move into another uh becky the albertalli book and i've been kind of blown away with how popular love simon is and the spinoff mm -hmm. series love victor was really popular that Honestly, none of her other books have really been like anything has come from it. And like Love, Simon is part of I think it's a four book series called the Simon verse. Mm -hmm. I would love to see any of those or uh, one of her more recent books, Kate and Waiting, like any of those I would watch the shit out of. Oh, Kate and Waiting. Is that I think you sent me that Kate and Waiting. Kate and is Waiting is great. Yeah. Kate and okay. Waiting. I sent you Kate and Waiting and Lose You to Find Me as yeah, uh, yeah. birthday gifts. Yes, yes. Kate and Waiting. <laughs> Kate and Waiting, I started and I was like, I'm into um, like, this sounds really, 
I don't know how else to describe it in a way that doesn't sound melodramatic, but I was like in too dark of a mood. I was like, this is so peppy. I can't do this right now. I have to wait till <laughs> yes. Well, I get that actually, because it is a, a very, it is a very peppy book. <laughs> yeah. 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 Maybe that's um, why it hasn't been adapted into a movie yet, because I think a lot of YA now is dark darker brooding. stuff. Yeah. Like I think yeah. we're moving into the dark. Because uh, I think with um, they both die at the end, they're making that a TV show. Yeah. Which I'm like Yikes. curious to know how they're going to do it. I that's, haven't um, read the prequel. Was, was that Adam? Adam Silvera. So I think they're doing a whole like shared universe where this tv show is going to be where people get the phone call saying they're going to die that day and i don't i'm just curious that's one of the that i will say i'm excited to see how that turns out because it's one of those things where it's like okay well you have to have a plan if you are turning this into a tv show and you Mm -hmm. have a book and a prequel and the book is called They Both Die at the End. And spoiler alert, they fucking die at the end. I'm not sure. <laughs> not sure if that was it, clear. It's true. It, it, it does what it promises. Sure. And it's like, I'm curious to know if it's going to be like an anthology series where maybe each episode is like a different person or mm-hmm. I don't know. I'm just curious. I'm excited to see it. I think it's that the HBO is going to do it. So. Isn't there but another? Then, I feel like there was another show where there was like something where you had like your death date, like you were given your death date. I don't remember what that was. Uh, The Final Destination franchise. Does it? (laughs) But there was another YA book a few years before. You're um, thinking of The Ring. John David Hutchinson wrote a book that was people were getting letters in the mail. I feel like there was another one too. Okay. I have another one. Okay. Let's hear it. Go. Okay. There's a book called. There's a book called Anatomy by Dana Schwartz, and it's yeah. so good. And it's a, I love a period piece. So I like um, I the like a large reason why I picked it up is because I think it's 19th century, um, and yeah, it's Edinburgh in 1817, and it's this woman named Hazel who grew up who grew up in like a very um, well-to-do wealthy family and she obviously has the expectations of being like wifey doing the whole thing and like her life is pretty much going to amount to who she marries but she really wants to be a surgeon so she starts studying on her own and then she dresses up as a man to try and attend these classes on like how to be a surgeon and it is fascinating there's a love story in it also and i feel like this would also be a really interesting story to tell because it has the love story element it can be kind of like it tugs at your heartstrings especially at the end i won't give anything away but they also just came out um dana schwartz just came out with the second one i don't think it just came out but a second one also came out and i i need to read that also so i think anatomy would be a really good one that would be one of them for me for sure, especially because like the the time period is interesting. And I think people people love to just watch a different period of time play out in front of their eyes. And the like gender swap would be really cool to yeah. see. Um, I have one last absolutely crazy one to pitch. Okay. Um, <laughs> and this is such a long shot. Uh, Eric, I'm not sure if you remember these or not, because I definitely got them from our school library at one point in my life. But in the 90s, a man named Eric Morris wrote a four part YA series based on Friday the 13th called Mother's Day, Jason's Curse, the Carnival. And I forget what the fourth one is, but it Eric's literally Eric's about it. to pick them up. It is, <laughs> it is such a fun concept for a YA novel based on a horror franchise because it's Love just. It teens going to crystal lake and in each book a different teen finds the hockey mask and when they put it on jokingly they become possessed with the (gasps) evil of jason and kill their friends like jason Voorhees never really shows up in the books um Mm -hmm. it's amazing oh my god i've been trying to find (laughs) the fourth one i don't have all four so i have you have the three that i I have have. road trip and jason's curse I used to have the carnival, but that was my favorite one. And I read it so often 
that it fell apart. So no I I don't have Road Trip, and I've been trying to find Road Trip, and online it's like a hundred and fifty bucks to buy a copy of it. Right Listen, now. do you think a hundred and fifty bucks, even though I ripped it and had to tape it back together as a kid <gasps> by mistake? <laughs> oh my god! Look, if you if you're actually willing to sell, I will give you fifty bucks tomorrow for that. <laughs> but then I also have <laughs> this guy too. Oh, oh my god! Is Freddy this the same Krueger's author? Tale of Terror. This one's virtual terror wait but how <laughs> did they like, do they license out friday yeah. the 13th like yeah. how did oh. they do that oh a little there was a I, I have so many i could probably go get yeah. more um i have so many like i collect horror novelizations and like yeah. spinoffs and stuff like i have old buffy um oh my god yeah, the horror novelizations are wild they always have to tell you that it's like not canon because yeah. it's not part of the movie but it's like part of me is like maybe make it canon because sometimes it makes more sense i have the um would you jump on an opportunity like that if they were still doing like novelizations of movies oh absolutely <laughs> I, I feel I like that'd be fun it. you get you get to see the movie before everybody else you get a copy of the mm-hmm. script to work with i think it'd be very fun <laughs> i also i want them to do like i want them to do things like the cheap paperback books again where mm. the paper is so bad that if yeah. i'm yeah. probably yeah if i'm too rough it will probably just disintegrate in my hands yeah and they're i mean they are 30 year old books at this point but I just I want them to have like cheap paperbacks that are you can write quickly and then just kind of release like monthly like yeah yeah oh yeah. yeah I mean Boy, I still they. have all of those in the other room I, they are like right next to my Christopher Pike books yeah all of my Fear Street books my mom was smart enough not to throw out any of those yeah. she like had Fear boxes Street basically. you lucky Wait. man because my mother donated every childhood book that I had and oh. now I've been like rebuilding the collection. Um, Listen, she got rid of all the Pokemon cards, which I had a foil Charizard and is now worth ten thousand dollars. Yeah. But oh, listen, if we're talking about that's mistakes, a, that's that a big mistake L. my family made was that I had not to not to brag here, not to sound super oh, cool, brag, brag. but I had an impressive collection of 90s. Um, McDonald's and Burger King Happy <gasps> Meal toys that oh. she just donated to a local library or something. Terrible. And I was like, Mom, each one of those toys right now is going for like $150 a piece. And I probably oh, had good. like go to the Aston of them. Library yeah. and find a toy box and start going through it. <laughs> yeah, I need to find <laughs> I'm them. I'm taking this. <laughs> this was mine. It's my initials are on the bottom. <laughs> it's not stealing if it was originally mine. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Eric, you said you had one that you wanted to mention. One more book I have. uh, It's one of my favorite books. It's called Grasshopper Jungle. Uh And it is about this bisexual teen who is in love with his girlfriend and his best friend. And he's like kind of struggling with his sexuality and trying to figure out all that shit. And at the same time, um, accidentally unleashes an army of six foot tall, horny, deadly praying mantises that start destroying the town. And it is Whoa. so fucking good. It's such a great book. It is probably one of my all-time favorite books. My Wait. agent uh, also represents this author and is like one of the reasons that I reached out to him. Because I was like, if he let that guy write that book, I think he'll let me write pretty much anything that I What is pitched. it called? And so far, I've been correct. It's called <laughs> Grasshopper Jungle. Grasshopper Jungle. It's so good. That's a wild concept. It, and that's, you know, I, I will say that is one of those books that in my head, I was, it was like one of the ones I was reading where I was like, this is why I, I can't believe that you can have like this mature kind of dissection of just sexuality and how awful it is to be a teenager sometimes. And people are letting them publish things like this. I was like, I wish I had this when I was a kid. Yeah. And it's just, it's such a great book. You mentioned Goosebumps. Like, Goosebumps, to me, I reread the origin, the first run of 62 Goosebump books maybe 10 years ago <laughs> for a blog. And, like, nine times out of ten, those books always just end up being, like, a wacky misunderstanding and, like, no one was yeah. ever really in danger. And I think in my brain, that's just what I put, like, every single book ever that isn't, like, an adult yeah. book is, like, there's 
never any real danger, which like now I'm rereading the Animorphs books and that couldn't be any more different. The Animorphs books have like <laughs> the stakes in those books are like through the roof from the very first book and it never slows down. And it's like people are Animorphs dying. Things so good. It's really, really good. Those are very, very and it good. It holds books. up. Also, there are like some ideas, like sci-fi ideas that are just horrific that it's like, I can't believe wasn't I th- I feel like there was one where they all turn into ants at one point and they kind of lose their personality because they just become focused on like helping the queen of this colony yep. and stuff like that. And then I remember I think there's another one where they like there's some guy that they give the power to I was gonna bring this up if you did he, it. Like, He's evil. He takes. He is evil. And what do they do to him? They t- they, they make literally him change into something. They turn him in. They make him turn into a mouse, and they trap him so that he's he goes past the two hour limit and has to live the rest of his life as a mouse. And then they find a deserted island to leave him, so he goes insane and kills himself. Jesus God! <laughs> like, it's like. But wait, there's another thing too. I was like, I didn't realize it when I was a kid, but I was. Somebody, I think, was talking about it on Twitter a few years ago, and I was like going down this um, Twitter rabbit hole of everybody talking about how traumatic Animorphs is. And which, by the way, how about that? That means a Netflix, like with yeah. a budget, not Nickelodeon. Yeah, kind the, of thing. the Nickelodeon yeah. show almost made me not like Animorphs. Like, <laughs> like <laughs> I think that's why I didn't but, finish the books until this year because that show debuted and I was so excited and it took the wind out of my sails and I just stopped reading them. <laughs> but there's apparently some plot point that she explains what happens to their bodies while they are More transformed things. into the animal. Cause it's not, their body is not changing yeah, into an animal. It's in an ethers elsewhere. Their bodies yes. literally and separated it's, it's in somewhere space. in space, which is where the aliens are using to travel from wherever they are to uh, the earth. It's, and so at any moment, their body could be destroyed by a spaceship, like splattering it into I'm a like billion pieces. What yeah, the fuck? No, it is. It is one it's of the wild. most. And it's, it's like the most high end sci fi I've ever read. And it's children books from the 90s. Wow. <laughs> Dude, she was wild. Wow. I, I, I've been re- wanting to re- read them, but there's so many of them. Mm. That, and I know some of them don't have some of them were not written by the uh author who yeah. is a she had a ghost writer team, Kay yeah. applegate they have like ghost writers but she wrote a good portion of them and the ones that are like really important are ones that she wrote and then they kind of like filled in with like a monster of the week kind of thing where it doesn't actually change the story at all it just yeah. something else there's, is going on there's one book in the entire franchise i haven't read because when i was trying to find a copy for it it was like three hundred dollars and then I Googled it and like every person was like, oh, this is the worst Animorphs book. Oh. Like, like nothing mm-hmm. happens. It's pointless. And I'm like, okay, cool. If I'm going to have to skip one, at least it's like the one. I yeah, that's still. the one. <laughs> <laughs> it's, like, it's like, okay, the one where like apparently Casey just still. like hangs out in Africa for no explainable reason for an entire book by yeah, herself. That like, is it. like, I was is just the cool. one where she's turning into a crocodile. I don't know. I never read it. Gorilla. I, <laughs> <laughs> I, have, yeah, I met the cover. Yeah, those cool covers those covers are fantastic um all right well i think this was fun i hope everyone had fun listening to it yeah i we hope so recording too. it Let wait us i have know. one i have my oh. one more book oh yes go. go one more okay there's a book called cackle and i'll see who wrote it hold on and i read it rachel harrison is who wrote it i read it to falls ago and then i read it again last fall because it's like the perfect halloweeny book without being scary mm. it's the l- perfect amount of like spooky um hocus pocus vibes um except well, what well i was gonna say we'll definitely have to do like in the yeah. beginning of october oh, some like hey oh, it's yeah. october here's some recommendations for this yeah. month episode yeah <laughs> i think cackle i like got the audio book so that i could listen to it in the fall my sister loves it like i think that cackle has the potential of replacing like a hocus pocus vibe classic because it's the perfect mix of like all the magical things you want with like a little bit of spooky but not enough to like like it could 100 percent be a disney movie it was great so that's my final one and i love this conversation 
I'm also guilty of like every time I read a book, I'm like, this should be a movie. And I'm like, yep. no, babe, you just use your imagination. So that's In <laughs> unless I'm reading unless I'm reading a terrible book. And then I'm yeah. like, this should be nothing. This shouldn't yeah, even this be. Should. A and book. then it comes out next year as a movie. Yeah, exactly. Now, that's how it usually happens. Now we'll yes. get into maybe one day. Ooh, maybe. So I don't know, since I'm the memoir reader, maybe I'm the one, but I was going to be like, I could do a whole thing of memoirs that made me like the person less. But if you have your guesses, uh, YA OK podcast on Instagram. Yes. Guess what what memoir I might be referring to. And guess let us who we're going to be talking shit about. Later. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, you know, let us know what you're currently reading. If you send us a little mini review, we'll read it at the end of an episode. Uh, mm -hmm. Maybe we'll even take it as a suggestion for any of us to read my uh, the amount of money I've spent on books this year has like quadrupled since starting this podcast because every guest I'm like, I need to buy all of the things that they've ever mm -hmm. released. <laughs> <laughs> So stay tuned for more of that, guys. You're listening to the Geekscape Network.